Family of Christ, I want to sing a song. Why not bring someone to the pulpit? I'm pressing on.
everybody. Yeah. Oh, some God, I'd like to say a pleasant good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to say I'm bringing forth what a Maureen Cora. What's her name? Maureen Cora. This is not somebody that I actually recognize. It's somebody that I know. But what I do recognize is that she's from St. John Ministry. Go ahead. Under Mother Hazel Thomas, my favorite speaker. The <laughs> 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 scripture declares that every knee yes. shall bow and every tongue shall that declare that he is Lord. Yes. yes. And she will be speaking on today, what have I done now in comparison to you? Mm. Mm. Guide me, O God. Grapes 
better than the full great harvest of Abyssia. And God gave Horeb and Zeb, the Midianites, leaders, into your hands. What was I able to do compared to you? And this, at this, the resentment against him subsided. Here and then this few little verse from Judges 8. In the book of Judges, in spite of the repeated falling away of his people, God provided deliverance time and time again. Please note the Hebrew word rather misleadingly translated in the English Bible as judge is from the verb that can also mean decide, rule, govern, vindicate, and deliver. That's the warrior judge such as Othniel, Jephthah, and Gideon might have been termed deliverance. However, the real hero of judges is God himself, who alone remains faithful in spite of the falling of his people. My God. Today, our focus is on Gideon, who was a warrior, which is the meaning of his name, and also a military hero and spiritual leader. Through the life and exploits of Gideon, God reveals much about himself and the preparation for leaders in his divine service. Amen. Now, time wouldn't permit me today to explain in depth how God calls leaders from unlikely situations. Amen. Gideon was a poor farmer, a son who worked his, with his hands, and his father was an idol worshiper. Despite this fact, Gideon was an effective leader in God's service. His first assignment was to destroy his father's altar of Baal in the family backyard. For Jesus said in Matthew 10, 37, 38, whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not fit to be my disciple. Whoever loves his son or daughter more than me is not fit to be my disciple. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow in my footsteps is not fit to be my disciple. For in the ministry of Jesus Christ, our first order of business is to please God, not man. Yes. Amen. 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 I would say again, our first order of business is to please God and not man. Amen. Amen. Gideon history teaches that God prefers a few dedicated and disciplined disciples. Yes. Yes. For our God can win victory with a fully committed minority. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Judges 2, Judges 7, 2 Hallelujah. says, The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men uh -huh. for me to deliver Midian into your hands. Now, when God first called Gideon to do this assignment, Gideon went to God with 32 members, 32,000 mm -hmm. of his arm. Um, God said, no, 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 that's too much, too much, too much, too much. He said, cut it down. All right, he cut it down, he went with 10,000. God said, no, 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 too much, too much, too much. Cut it down. As a matter of fact, God said, I will choose the men to go with you on the battlefield. And so he cut it down, 300. And then, in order that Israel, he did that, right? In order that Israel may not boast against me or her own strength has saved Now you know how man like to take whole glory. We like to beat up ourselves first. Beat up with chest and say, it's because of me, he can well. It's because of me, he can walk. It's because of me. We're glory. We want to take from God. We want to take all God glory. But God said, no, this is the reason why he cut down Gideon's army to 300 men. Because he said, if he didn't do that, prevented Gideon himself and the 32,000 
uh, members of the army might have been beaten up their chest and said, well, it's we. That win the victory and completely leave God out of it. History declares from the early days the tribe of Ephraim was an influential force in Israel. They had a proud, they was proud, mm -hmm. a proud heritage. It's we, men, they know what it is. Bring up the self. However, human power is temporary. Yes. yes. And it can violate kingdom values. Yes. When you're too haughty and puff up, mm -hmm. all kind of thing is gone. Yeah. We don't study God. So chapter 8 opened up with the men of Ephraim complaining to Gideon yes, that they were not given consideration <laughs> in Ephraim's strategic plans and actions when he went to fight the Midianites. Now, in truth, they were there, you know. The Ephraimites were there. But they find that, nah, we, we ain't get a good, although they were there, Nah, we 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 play a good part. We have play an important part in this thing here. So they went to Gideon, complaining, and the men of Ephraim said to him, "Why have you done this to us? By not calling us when you went to fight the Midianites?" Now I want to let a note the attitude and the temperament of these Ephraimites. Because, as I said before, they were the influential tribe, you know. You know, they, they, they was, they was it. Yeah. Yeah. They feel they was it. Yeah. They thought they was it. Yeah. Yeah. So they started, they didn't go to, to Gideon and know, nice, loving manner, you know. I could just imagine it in my eyes. So who you think you is? Mm -hmm. How you can go and fight the Midianites without me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to be there. You have to ask me. And if we ain't there, nothing can go on. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, he reprimanded him sharply. Mm -hmm. So they didn't go in a peaceful manner, no loving manner. They went there to, 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 well, I would say fight. Get in. Because they feel left out. They feel insulted. Because them didn't get to take God's glory. Who man? Which man on the face of the earth must take God glory? Uh -uh. However, we must remind ourselves of chapter 6, verse 12, chapter 6 of Judges, verse 12, which says, When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Amen. Verse 14, and the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of the Midianite's hand. Now, Gideon knowing all of this, when they come to attack him and reprimand him, he just, he take a pull, you know, he stay quiet, he listen to them, they carry on, up, 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 they slap the gun, Now, Gideon, knowing all of this, Gideon could have said to them, well, you know, well, the Lord sent his angels to tell me this, to do this, to do that, nine them business. Amen. Only Gideon alone had the vision. My God. So he didn't have to tell them that. So Gideon, knowing this, Gideon know what he know, what he know, what he know about God. So he didn't have to tell them that. But here what he do. He answered them with tact and diplomacy. Right. Give you an answer. What have I done now in comparison to you men? God delivered the head of Oren and Zeb in your hands. My God, my God, I couldn't do that now. The Americans here, they say pacify. But we in Trinidad, we they say, Mama Guy. <laughs> so Gideon start a Mama Guy then now. Oh, no. It's like he rubbing the back, you know? <laughs> oh God, well, what have I done? Mm -hmm. You know, all you get the two heads of the big prince of Midianite. Right. Right. Yeah. All you bring it. I couldn't do that. 
Right. All these other victories, you all want, I couldn't do that. And he started, you know, he started to, to, to talk to them in a calm and peaceful manner because Gideon knew what he know, what he know, what he know, what he got. Yes. <laughs> so the Bible says when he started to talk that way, the spirit calmed. Yes. So they must be saying, oh yeah, boy. Yeah, that is truth. You know all what he's saying is truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they became calm. When we are in leadership, we have to know how to approach people. Yes. All eyes on us. We have to know how to approach people. We have to know how to talk to people. We have to be approachable so people can come and talk to us. But that wasn't it to the Ephraimites. Because they feel they were too big for their clothes. Hence the reason why God couldn't use them to do nothing. You think he could have called the Ephraimites and say, look. All you go. But when he comes to them and he look and he see the attitude of these men, he tells himself, mm -hmm. not at all. They say Gideon was timid. But when God gave you an assignment, even if you're timid, and you make up your mind to do what God say, listen. He does equip you. Yes. He does give you equip plans. Yes. If you have a little fear, you go touch you, you go make you strong and red. If you feel well, you know, you can't walk good or something, you go touch you. You go make you whole and good. God know when God gives you an assignment, he don't leave you looking in the bushes. He does equip you, man. Because he equipping you so that you can do his will, so that he alone can get the glory. So, he said, I have given you the leaders, God has given you the meat leaders of Zebra, of Zeb and Horeb into your hand. I, 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 I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that at all. So he pacified it. It is easy for flesh to act even when God has given a victory. Yes. You know, we don't be happy for we brothers and sisters when things go good, you know. When God, I'm talking about in God now, eh? Mm -hmm. It's always something. And when we in leadership, we have to understand that we are going to get confrontation. Yes. We are always going to be tried. People are always going to be saying something mm -hmm. or coming to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And when you're in leadership, does this happen? Mm -hmm. Does this happen when you're in leadership? We have to understand that. We're going to meet up confrontation. We're going to meet up contention. Everybody going to like when God gave you a victory. Everybody ain't going to like that. Although, although we are all one. Yes. So we have to understand that when we're in leadership, we too, we can, you know, we, we, we can get trip up. But the good thing with Gideon was, Gideon could have go up one side and come down the next side of them. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he answered them with tack and diplomacy, just as how Jesus. Remember Jesus? When he walked this earth, 2,000 odd years ago? Remember the scribes and the Pharisees? Yes. They were always confronting Jesus. Yes. Anything the man do, yes. they only heals. Yes. But Jesus too, just as Gideon, he used to use tact and diplomacy yes. to answer them. And this is what we have to learn when we are in leadership. We can't be, <laughs> Because they're going to come at you, you know. They're going to come at you. So we too, if the Spirit of God wasn't dwelling with Gideon, well, I don't know what would have happened. But the Spirit of God quickened. He quickened Gideon so that Gideon would be calm. And answer them, calm. And the Bible say that when he answered them that way, their spirit get 
So we have to know that when confrontation come our way, how to answer, how to move, what to say. Go ahead. Because as I said, when you're in leadership, everybody iron you, you know. Oh, you're the leader and it's that what you're telling me? That's how you're answering me? You're not fresh. You're not with tongue. You're not too good all the time. So when we're in leadership, we have to know how to carry ourselves. How to assert ourselves. Not in no, you know, warring kind of manner. But Gideon also had a proper perspective eh? on who God is. Hear what he said. But Gideon had a proper perspective of who victory belongs to and who it is to receive God's glory. Psalm 115.1 says, and this is what Gideon had practiced. Not to us, Lord, not unto us, but to thy name. Give glory because of thy loving kindness and because of thy truth. Yeah. Only glory we belong to God. Yes, Lord. My mind is like to beat up the chest to take God's glory. Only glory belongs to God. What power we have? We have no power without God. We are nothing. We have no power to do what? <coughs> if God not in the mix, what power we have? We have nothing. So we have to know and we have to give respect where respect is due. Amen. Amen. It takes all kind to make a nation or a church. And a leader, a leader must know how to handle each one, especially after a great victory. Especially after God gave victory. Amen. You have to know how to move. You have to know how to encourage the brothers. You have to know how to encourage the sisters. That is as, 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 as a leader. And, and when you're in leadership, this is the way you have to move. You can't say, ah, they will leave your church. Wise King Solomon says, in Proverbs 17, 14. <clears throat> the beginning of strife is like releasing water. Therefore, stop the contention before a quarrel starts. My God. So if you're in leadership and you're talking to the flock or whoever, and you realize that this person getting antsy and, 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 and ready to look for, hey, do like Gideon. Come down. Come down. Yes, cool it down. Don't answer them back in no, no, no fuss and fury. Because as I said before, the first thing they're going to say, oh, so you is a leader and that's how you're getting on. Yes. All eyes on you when you are in leadership. All eyes. And let me say, all of us are leaders in our own right. Yes, Lord. So we have to understand that. How to act when we are in leadership. Yes. Romans 12, 3 tells us, for the grace of God given to me, I say, to every man among you, do not think more highly of yourself yes, than you ought to think. Yes. But Amen. think so as to have some judgment yes. as God has allotted each man a measure of faith. So when God did give Gideon this assignment to do, now Gideon had always loved God. But you know sometimes when God calls us to do anything, we a little timid now. We a little, you know, this, I hear this sister say, when she come up, she was, she was nervous. And imagine God calling you to go and do something. Well, you're even more nervous now. Just as Jerry, when he called Jeremiah, just as when he commissioned Moses mm -hmm. to lead the Israelites out of, of, of bondage, oh, all of them were scared. But when we make up our mind, when we finally make up our mind to do what God says, He does equip us. He does give us things. You know, when you, you, you stand up here, you don't even know when and how you talk. This, this is the God that we serve. This is how God does work. Once you make up your mind, that is how He does work. So Gideon was called of God and he acted as he was directed. He ain't do nothing with God and Satan. Yes. Yes. Obedience. 
He ain't doing that, and that is another thing. When God call us, we have to be obedient. Do it. If He said do this, do that. Don't add a penny. Don't add a dollar. Don't add nothing. nothing. Do exactly what God says, and all will be well. Yes, sir. This is the God that we serve in. Yeah. When you want to go outside of what He said, then you're looking for trouble, and whatever trouble you get, you take. Yes, yes. So he acted as he was as, as, as directed. He neither took honor for himself, or no, then he disposed of the honor, but he left it all up to God. He ain't say he ain't beat up his chest and say, well, it's me and my 300 men will kill all the Midianites and take all the glory for himself. He didn't do that. He gave the honor and glory where it was due unto God, and he left everything. When God tell him to go, he left everything up to God. For God to direct him. Yes. And this is when we in leadership, this is what we have to do. Not because we in leadership, we feel that we can do what we want and, and how we like. I hear teacher Marva talk about it. You can't do what you want because you in leadership when I the boss. So I can do what, uh -uh. you might be the boss of your home and you're still in the boss of your home. You might be the boss of yourself, but you're still the boss of yourself because there is one higher above yes. that we have to give an account to. So he trusted God in every step of the way. Chapter 8, verse 22 and 23. Yes, your light said to and here, here, how he didn't um, take the honor and glory for himself. In chapter 8, verse 22, 23, the Israelites said to Gideon, now this is after he, 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 he ruled and, and he, he, um, he killed all the Midianites, the army. They said, well, rule over us. You or your sons or your grandson, because you have said to us out of the hands of the Midian. You have saved us out of the hands of the Midian. Hear yeah, what Gideon tells them. I will not rule over you. Nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Yes. Pan Psalm 75, 6 to 7 says, Promotion comes not from the east, not from, from the west, west, but from God. Amen. So Gideon couldn't take it up unto himself to say, Well, I rule in all you. There is one higher yes. that he has to answer to. Yes. And that's another thing when we're in leadership, we have to learn to stay in our lane. Amen. Stay in your lane. Gideon couldn't take it up unto himself to say, well, all right, yeah. Well, I can all the Midianites and I can rule over all, you know. Uh -huh. He still had to consult with God if God wanted him to do that. Amen. So the major task of a leader is to serve God. God. And make sure all honor and glory is given only unto God, not unto man. Yes, so we go here to the mice now for the Ephraimites. So Gideon calmed the anger. He avoided a civil war because that was that is what was going to happen if he didn't act the way he acted. That would have been a civil war Amen. between brothers, Amen. between the church. A civil war that later fell up between Ephraim and Manasseh. And that we can find in Judges 12, 1 to 7. In comparison to, to Judges 8, Jephthah wasn't so, he wasn't so, you know, kind and, and, and thing with, 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 with the Ephraimites. He wasn't so patient and tactful as Gideon was. And the result was a civil war that broke out. That day, 42,000 of the Ephraimites were killed. 42,000. So, what was avoided before happened at the end because them Ephraimites feel they was too, all that and a piece of cake, as my mother's spiritual mother would say. Yes. Praise they feel there was all that and a piece of cake. Amen. You know, them was it. And they, nobody could do nothing without them. You have to, and in the same way how we approach Gideon, in the same way he went to Jephthah, and that is what 
Make 42,000 of the Ephraimites get killed at it. Oh, who you think you come in to talk to? That is what Jaffa tell him. Mm. Who you think? Who you think? You come in to ask that. When I call you to help me, yes. the, 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 the army of the Amorites, yes. you say, yeah, I'm coming and you never come. Praise mm. God. So now when you come in to ask me mm. of why I didn't call you, hey, hey. Jaffa wasn't so obedient. Praise God. He wasn't so patient. And he killed them out, and that, that was the, 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 the demise of the Ephraimites who thought there was all that. Yes. And that was that Should be singing. 
Yes. And they should be taken me to that place where God appeared for me. Amen? Amen. Amen? I dream about it all the time. I am not afraid of death. I just don't want to suffer. I dream of that day that when God should call me from books up to me. I have a dream. I don't know if anybody else has one. But I just see angels in heaven blowing trumpets. Amen. And I just see taking me up into this place unknown. And we marry to Jesus. I dream about it. Because I've done most of what God asks me for. My God. Today God has me on another road. And I don't know how others feel about it. Oh. But you have to be able to reach that stage in your life. Yes, Lord. Where you find a peace. Yes. Come on. That man cannot give you. Amen. Is that a time I used to worry about church? Oh yeah. No more because I know now that the church belongs to the house of God. And what he say he will do, he will do. No man, none of us. All we do is hinder each other. To go where God sent me. So, I listen to him. And I sit there and I dream him. Family, I have a friend, a very special friend, and his name is Jesus. That's right. I know how he loves me. I know how he loves me. I pray God I return him the love. Amen? Family in Christ, I need someone to lead us in prayer. Sometimes when you're walking on a journey, mother, somewhere on the spiritual journey, you need some wind beneath your wings. Amen. Amen. And we have to encourage each other. Because on that journey, we just get tired. Faith does leave us. But God is able mm. and sufficient to keep us. I need a volunteer to talk to God for us. And this is I've seen so many people, but nobody coming to the same.
what a God we know. My God. Calling on you one more time, Lord. My God. Calling you from the depth of our bosom, Lord. My God.
and I'm going to bring teacher Christy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I don't know anything about the young woman. All I hear is, I've got a friend. Special friend. Special friend. I'm going to send somebody else. 
And then the Spirit of God says, Minister Cheval Roseman. Yes. Well, trouble now stop. Because when I tell Minister Cheval, Minister Cheval say, why you can't send Auntie Sharon or Judy? <laughs> not me, I am not going. And she got very upset. I think she told her husband, husband say you have to go. And she was upset with us for a little while. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I'm always happy to come to Boston. Through the storm, through whatever it is, over the years, we come here religiously every year. Praise the Lord. And so I am happy to be here. And you know, you said God speaks to you, and I truly believe that God speaks to you. Because this word here could not have been fitting for no other church Amen. than the covenant of the white cloth. Wow. And to the minister, Chevelle Rose. When she started to realize now the word, because she ignored first, it's like she said she gets vexed and she got back good and she gets vexed again. <laughs> and she realized that that word, it was divine. Hmm. You know, and it made a divine intervention in her life. Minister Shemel, I want to say she has a carnal mother that is alive of her own. She also has teacher Sharon, is also her mother. But, you know, you have children in the house of God. And I didn't have time to say that Shemel is my daughter, but she chose me to be her mother. Praise Amen. Praise the Lord. And so. She listens sometimes, <laughs> absolutely no one. <laughs> and she said, Mother didn't say, I'm not doing it. Praise God. But I want to give God for her. Thanks for her this evening. I want to thank God that, you know, for her humility in the end to come to deliver this word. I don't want to say much about her, but I will let her word that she's about to bring speak for her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, with our good and do, church receive. Minister Chevelle. Right here. So when I saw this topic, how do you become subjected? 
it to the higher power. Oh. I, I don't know why she give it to me. <laughs> I, 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 still not, I know, but I don't know at the same time. Because I said, God, I, I'm not going to speak. I was done with the speaking thing. Mm. This is the first time I'll be speaking in two years. Because I put it down. I said, God, I'm done. I said, this, this church thing is just, and I'm not even, I wasn't even born in spiritual baptism. I was born in Pentecostal and I was done. So much less to see a lot of things that's going on. Amen? But as I read the topic, I read Romans 13 over and over again. And I said, God, I don't know, I don't understand what you want me. It took me weeks after I got after I got this message. I said, God, what am I supposed to get from Romans 13? Romans 13. Subjecting to the higher power. But first, I'm, I'm sorry for my disrespect. I would like to greet Arch Abbas. <laughs> Take your time. All right. Take your time. I would like to greet the Bishop Ashby, to all of the leaders, to my mother, Teacher Christine, and to my pastor and husband, Alistair Rosen, and to all mothers, teachers, and everyone in the congregation. Amen. I would like to give God all honor and thanks, because it's always a privilege to deliver the word of God. When I first looked at the topic, I said, I'm asking, you're asking me, how do you become? So when you ask me, how do you become? That means you're asking me how to do something. Come on. If I ask Teacher Sharon how to make stew chicken, she gonna tell me you gotta season the chicken first, and you gotta do this, and then you gotta bun the sugar in the pot and all. She give me some steps to get to where I need to go to make sure my stew chicken look good and taste good too. Amen. And I I began to look at myself and I said, God, how am I supposed to sub tell other people how to subject when I'm the hardest person to subject to anything? I like to do what I want, when I want, and how I want. Yeah. Except in the house of God, of course. So then I began to read Romans 13 over and over, and it says, I stayed at verse 1 and 2 because that's just where the Spirit of God told me to stay. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Amen. The powers that be are ordained of God. So whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive themselves to damnation. So then I had to do a little research because I said, what exactly was going on? Who was talking and what happened? I don't like to come and talk and I don't know what I'm talking about. So in this, in Romans 13, Paul was talking to the people and saying that even though we are under Nero, who was the emperor at the time, and he was slaying Christians and didn't really care for Christians, we still had to obey him. So in my head I begin to say, I ain't obeying nobody that's trying to slay me or bring me down. But yet here Paul is saying that we must obey even to those tyrants that do not care for us or do not listen to us. When the police come and driving you down, you hear the sirens going and going. You don't have a choice but to stop your car. Amen? Amen. But for some reason, we as people in Christ, we don't care to listen or stop. We like to just go, go, go and take no instructions. Amen? But then it goes on to say that if you resist the power, you resist the order of God. So I don't know about you, but my fear for God is infinite. And there is nothing, once God says, hey, you have to do this, I want to be up here today, but here I am. Amen? So at the end of the day, we, must, we cannot resist the power of God. Amen? And if you choose to, well, that's for you to do, not me. Amen? So I begin to write down some steps and I said, God, I don't know what steps I'm supposed to say. I don't know what I'm supposed to tell the people. But then I got that the first step to subject into a higher power is to make a choice. Amen? Amen. Amen. I begin to say, God, what do you mean make a choice? We, at, we must desire to subject unto God. Yes. We must desire his presence. I don't mean desire like with your mouth and say, oh God, I desire to be like you or God, I want to. No, I mean you must desire it from your belly, from your spirit, from your mind. Your body must make a conscious decision that you want to subject unto God. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we get confused and we say, oh God, uh, you know, I, I know I should be doing this, but I don't really want to. And, you can't have that type of spirit when you're making a choice. Because amen. once you make that first step and you make a choice, you cancel disobedience. Amen? Because when I say I'm going to do something, that means, God, no matter what you tell me to do, I am subjected unto you and I will do it. Amen? amen. So that means there should be no disobedience. Amen? amen? When you make the choice, you desire the spirit of God. You desire to walk like God and to talk like God. The Bible says, for they that are after the flesh, desire the flesh, but they that are after the spirit are like the spirit. Amen? Amen. So once you make this choice, you desire, you forget about the carnal things. A lot of the young people don't like me. They say because I think I'm too holy or because I'm too this. 
but I don't feel like I should wait 20 and 40 yes. years like my mother and my uncle and my cousin to serve God. It doesn't make any sense. Like, Amen. I am young. I'm in my prime, so I feel like this is the time to serve God. I don't party, so they say I, I'm too good of a Christian. I don't like to hang out too much in the street. They say I'm, I'm too this and I'm too that. But I love the fact that that is the way that I am because it keeps me in Christ. Everybody has a different remedy that works for them, but this remedy works for me. Amen. But you must understand that when you make this choice, right, the enemy has a kingdom that he's building, just like God has a kingdom that we are building. So just like how you have, yes, I'm making this choice, and yes, God, I trust you, this is when the enemy feels like, all right, this is my chance. Let me break her down before she can even reach the second step. Yes. This is where the enemy steps in. You never used to, you don't drink alcohol anymore. All of a sudden you desire, oh God, I'm stressed. Let me take a drink. <laughs> or you stop smoking and all of a sudden, oh God, I need to smoke this because I'm, everything that you used, that you stopped and you said, I don't want to do anymore. You begin to desire it. This yes. is where the first step where you must make yourself accessible to God. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. So then I began to say, God, you, after you make this choice, what you're supposed to do? It took like four days before for me to get the second step. I said, because God, what, what am I supposed to do? But then I got, you must understand who you are subjecting to. Because many of us sit in church, but we do not understand how powerful and how mighty our God is. We come to church and we pray. And we say, oh God, you are good. Oh God, you are great. But when it comes down to it, we don't understand the God that we are serving. When you make the choice to subject unto a higher power, you must begin to build your relationship with God or mend your relationship with God. Amen. I put the word mend yes. because if you like me, I was in a place where God was the most perfect thing in the world and everything was perfect. And I was in my Pentecostal church and we was hallelujah with the drum, the guitar, and the piano, everything nice. I felt like God was the best thing in the world until the bishop said, you want to get married? Sit down. I like to worship. Worship is me. Worship is what I am made of. I don't care what church I go into. Worship is what I love to do. So when I was sat down because I wanted to get married, which I, that's a different testimony for a different time. I sat down and I, I continued going to church and I sat in the back of the church and I said, God, I want to sing, but I can't sing because I, I'm singing, but I, I know what I'm capable of and I know what you call me to do. So why is it? that I cannot operate in what you've called me to do. I can worship. That's what you called me to do. Well, at least that's what I thought he called me to do. So I said, if I'm not worshiping, then what's the point? I sat there for weeks and then months, and months went into a whole year. And after that year, I said, I'm done. I'm done with this church thing. I'm gonna just do what I want because I'm in church still, and still no, there's no one don't wanna listen. So I said, I'm done. I'm gonna do whatever I want. So that's when I started to party and hang out and do this and do that. And it was fun. I ain't gonna lie. Sin is fun. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, never, I never slept around. Praise the Lord for that one. But sin is sweet. And we can sit here and lie to each other. I probably ain't sin as much as a lot of people in this room because I'm still young. But sin is sweet. And when you're doing it, it feels nice. Amen? But when we, make, when we understand who our God is, our prayer life must increase. Our time in the presence of God must increase. But most in time, you see this book? You see the studying of this word? I like to, I like to when I come into the church, I remember when I first came into a Baptist church, and I see them shouting, I said, oh God, I want to be able to do that. I said, look at this, I can't do it, but I enjoy just watching and seeing that how you guys can come together and worship God in a different way that I know. So that just made me, oh God, well I know how to do my Pentecostal worship, but now I desire a little bit more. Because at the end of the day, Spiritual Baptist is a spiritual church. And I desire to be a little more spiritual. If I could be just a little more like you, God, that's what I desire. So I sit down. If you see me in the, in the church, I just sit in the back most of the time. And I'm listening and I observe and I watch. Because that's how you learn. Amen. You can't, people like to do, 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 do. No, no, no. You have to listen and you have to observe. Amen. But when you choose to subject to God, then everything in your life changes. It focuses toward God. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So this tells me that no matter where I go on the face of the earth, that the word is the most important thing. See, we focus too much on the other attributes 
We focus on shouting and we focus on and who could pray the best and who could do this and who could do that. But at the end of the day, these are only things to amplify our spiritual life. Amen? Amen. At the end of the day, Amen. Your, your spiritual life must build upon the word of God. We start with the word. Amen? But people tend to forget that it's this that will keep you. They think because they could, they could. I, I can't do it, but just watch. They're going to fall and they're going to do all this and they're going to run and they're going to, and some people are going to skip too. <laughs> The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want him. Ah, and then the Lord. So, you can do all of that. It's fine and dandy. I respect it. I love it. Listen, I love it more than y'all, I think. But, at the end of the day, the word is what was what would keep us. Amen? The key is the word. And it's the only thing that will allow us to reach our full potential. See, the aim is to go to heaven. But for some reason, we have this notion that, well, Pentecost are going to heaven. Spiritual Baptists going to heaven. This one going to heaven. But everybody forgets, so what about the prepared? Who's the prepared people? Because yeah. last time I checked, the Bible ain't say spiritual Baptists going to heaven. No. They ain't say Pentecostal going to heaven. No. So I don't understand where we get this notion from. There are different denominations, but there is one goal to reach yeah. to heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. As children of God, we proclaim that he's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I lost my voice, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my water? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My voice is just. I was shouting too much. I was too much. <laughs> I was trying to. <laughs> in my head and my spirit, I was doing it. So I was rejoicing, and I guess I, I kind of said it out loud, and I lost my voice. But as children of God, we proclaim that He's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But yet we have no faith. We don't believe that God can do what He says He can do. Amen. Amen. We sit down and we say. Oh God, you know, I have this situation and I remember when I was going for I was going to apply for college cuz school is my thing. I, I'm an A student. I, I'm a nerd. What they that's what they say. It's all right. And I went to when I went to go to college at that time me and my mother fighting this one fighting because I said I want to get married. But we'll get to the married part just now. <laughs> I wanted to I, all kind of fighting and arguing and I was like, you know, I might as well just not go to school. Let me just work and do what I do. But the devil is a liar, amen? amen. I, went to, I went to the school, and when I got to the school, all I'm seeing is this $26,000. I said, God, where I'm getting this $26,000 from? So then after I said, you know what, Alistair, I'm not doing this, I'm tired. I just shouted, oh, just shut your mouth and And you know how she likes to cuddle. So I'm like, oh my God. Then I told, we went to financial aid now, and I, I have no faith. I said, God, I'm done. I don't, at this time, I'm still at God, I'm done. If it wasn't for my husband and you see Tita Sharon there, then I would not even, I don't even think I would have went on. We went to financial aid and the lady, we went to, we were supposed to go to this mean lady and then all of a sudden we end up getting this next lady. And she said, write this essay. I wrote the essay. I didn't matter if I didn't even want to write the essay. Come to the day of and I still didn't write the essay. The next day I write the essay and I sent it and she was like, well, good thing you just sent it because we didn't even send in the, um, the scholarship stuff yet. Well, I'm wondering where this $26,000 come from. I check in my account, scholarship, $26,000, amen? So, when people say that God can't do it, at that time I didn't have any faith. But uh, you have to make the decision where you say, God, you know what, no matter what I go through, no matter what I do, no matter what comes up against me, I will trust you. Yes. But yes. see, yes. We, don't have yes. no, we don't have no faith in God. We just act like we do. Mm. We just come, we church goers. We like to come to church and shout and prance around and do all this. Church, church. But, <laughs> we like to play church like the, like the gentleman in the back said. But when it comes to having faith, some of us have none. Amen? But if you know the God and you understand who you are serving, then that faith goes out, then you would have faith. Amen? And it took me back to Bible, Bible class, Bible school when I was like two, three years old. And I begin to think about Daniel, and I begin to think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's how you say his name, Abednego. I just always mess it up. Right? And I said, I said, God, why can't I be like Daniel? Then I began to ask myself some questions. Because the only fault that they could have found for Daniel was that he was faithful to praying to his God three times a day and rejoicing. Amen? So he had to find something to get him down. Amen? But even then, after being thrown in the lion's den, he began to pray. And the lion's mouth began to close. Yes. If I was to throw any of you right now in a lion's head, I'm sure you would say, oh God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. You start to panic. But if we had a faith like that, we would understand who our God is. We would understand who we are serving, amen? amen. When Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego went 
in that fire because they didn't want to deal with the idol and the, and the this. The, the, the King Darius looked at them like, so y'all not going to obey me. And when you saw four, he saw four of them coming out, that's when he realized, well, wait, this God is real. But see, they understood that. But for some of us, we have to go through a pulling, a tugging, a transforming, a this or that, before we can reach that place to get to, well, you know what, God? I know, I understand who you are, amen? amen. Some of us, we need, a, we need a push, we need a break, we need, some of us have to go through so much. I asked in Bible class, I said, I said, Mother Christine, I said, why is it that some people, like my husband, for example, get to do whatever they want for their whole life? They sin, they think, sorry, sorry, but they sin, they do what they want, they get to drink, they get to party. I was like, the minute I decide, well, I want to party now, I can't do it. <laughs> Something come up. You know, I told my mother, I said, but I, I don't really smoke, but I said I'm going to go to the hookah bar with my friends. I'm still going to the hookah bar. I can't reach the hookah bar yet. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm an honest person. I'm loud, you know, I just say what I say. And up to now, I can't reach. So I said, how is it that some people get the opportunity to go through all these life challenges, but for me, well, I got married when I was 18 years old, and I prayed to God when I was younger. I wanted to lose my virginity my husband. That happened, and now life is great, and everything going good. And I'm like, why is it that I couldn't, you know, be in the streets and do what I want and turn up and have fun, like our, us young people like to say. But some of us are not afforded that opportunity. Yeah. Amen. Some of us, we have to walk into it before. We don't have the opportunity to travel, well, one score and two score and three score. Now I'm safe. I have to, I, I just reached, not even a score. Well, I must be, I'm a score. Yeah. I just reached past a score right here. And some of us, we have to, you get to go all the way down there doing what you want. And me, I have to start yes. praising God yes. right here. Yes. 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 Amen? Yes. Yes. So I, I began to say, God, why me? I, 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 I didn't know what else to do. But I began to thank God and rejoice when I got to this section of writing. I said, because God, some people have to go through so much. And I'm looking at it as if it's a bad thing. But I don't have to go through all of that, which means I can reach your yeah. my purpose higher and better than some of these. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, we're supposed to be better than our spiritual parents, better than our mothers, and better than yes. our fathers. Yeah. So if yeah. I can start now, that means where TJ Christine took her to reach almost 60 to get where she needs to go, right? <laughs>
And it took me a little off because I said, you know what, God? I'm not even worried about Jonah right now, but there's some of us who's like, who's not like the sailors. We know this person is, they're they doing this, mm -hmm. doing that. We know, and it's that same situation, but we would not throw them overboard. Oh, and then we end up being the same God. storm. We constantly yeah. trying to find ourselves. We say, God, my mind going crazy. My family is out of control. I don't know what is this. I don't know what is that. My, my whole body is discombobulated because you refuse to throw them out of your boat. Amen. Amen. out of place it's okay to tell them to say you're doing something wrong but when it comes to your spiritual life you must remain in spiritual perfection what we aim to be which means that we throw that Jonah over oh Amen. 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 see Jonah decided that he wanted to go to Tarshish she didn't want to go to Nineveh because these people is that and these people is but that's the next thing we like to judge people so much that we don't realize God sent you there to save 50 people and instead of you follow what God is telling you to do, you decide, well, I, I, I don't want to do that. But Jonah saved the whole city by being obedient, by subjecting yeah, yeah. to the Spirit of God. See, once you realize, you understand who you're subjecting to, then you understand the purpose of this whole thing. Yeah, it's to spread the Word of God yeah. to the uttermost parts of the earth and yeah. to bring souls in. Amen? Yeah. But see, we, we, we're too busy. You got to understand God first before you reach yes. that place. Because once you understand God, then you know, all right, God, it's not even about just the, the praying and all this. It's not, even, it's not about all that. It's about bringing people from outside, yes. inside, Amen. to hear the word of God. Amen. So I use the term, when we understand who we are subjecting to, we realize that our subjection causes liberation and preservation. Yes. And I said, God, what, what I'm using these two words because I'm like, I, I don't even know. But then it began to come to me. Liberation means freedom, amen? amen. Yes. And there are plenty of people out there that want the freedom that we have in Christ. But some of them is in, when I know a friend, she, she's Muslim, she goes to my school, and every day she's like, oh my God, you know, I can't even do this and I can't even do that. And she wants to build the kingdom of God. We have it so good where we can walk in here and we can pray to God openly. We don't have to go five times a day to get something or get a result. Yes, yes. We can go to God and say, God, I need this right now. Yes. And God will bring it down if it's the appointed time. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it causes liberation. When you subject, it causes other people to be free. It causes not only the people that's in church that need to be free, because there's plenty that need to be free and they sit in church, but a lot of the people on the outside that need to be saved. Amen? But it also causes preservation. Because as a youth that has been in a church and disappointed by two people, which I won't name, disappointed to the point where I said, God, what's the, I believe in this man of God so much, and you telling me that he going to do this, but then I wasn't at the place yet to realize that it's not even about him. It's about my spiritual walk with God. Amen? And for us to move on, for our faith to move on, not just Pentecostals, for all the faiths, because I claim to be a spiritual Baptist too. Okay? <laughs> but it causes preservation. It causes the younger ones to now, how can we subject? How do you want us to subject when we can't even look at our leader and they subject into God? Amen. You see no progress in your leadership, but I'm supposed to subject. What I'm subjecting to? Hallelujah. You in the same place that you've been in since the day I met you, but you want me to subject unto you? Amen. God is a God of change. Yes. God is a God Amen. of progress. Amen. God is a God of progress. If my church open right, if my church open now, from now until I've seen Covenant of the White Court, I'm not going to boast because, you know, it's my church. But I've seen people come into our ministry, and even if they're not members, they come in and they are transformed, amen? Or something about them changes, or they say, you know what, I love this place, so I love to be here. See, I don't care about the membership. I tell, I mean, yes, membership bring money, bills, all that, yeah, we get all that. But at the end of the day, I'd rather see somebody's soul be saved and they pass through yes. than to become a member and there is no progress. Yes. Amen? Yes. 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 So then I got to the last section. I said, God, what is this third step? I can show you. The page is blank. I said, God, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I put one sentence on the page. And yesterday, I got it when I was sleeping. We came back from Thanksgiving, 2 o'clock in the morning to get back on the road for 6. And the last step is to put on Christ yes, and keep him yes. on, amen? amen? And as I thought about that, I said, I called Mother at like, I think, four, six o'clock this morning. 
And I said, Mother, you know I got it? I said, everybody's walk is individual, amen? amen. So I cannot tell you how to subject unto God, amen? amen. You must know amen. that this is my fault. See, because when, when you got through that understanding process, you understood your calling, you understood your purpose, you understood who God is, and even if you don't understand it fully, he gives you a little nudge. Yes. Yes. You, he, he's not going to just send you anywhere without a warning, amen? amen? So sometimes he tells us, he speaks to us, but we just choose to ignore. He's telling you to get up and go and ring the bell. You, oh, I'm not doing that because I don't know. Once God speak to you, you move. Well, that's what I believe in. Amen. I believe that Amen. if God, and if it's the Holy Spirit, don't, don't get it confused with, and, and think I understand craziness. Because when people, people have a tendency, oh, the Spirit told me to ring the bell. But nothing is in sync. The Spirit of God ain't flow. This ain't flow, but you in the Spirit of God. Amen? But we'll leave that at that. But at the end of the day, we must reach the place where we understand that the Spirit of God is not an author of confusion. Amen? So if God, if, if the Spirit is moving in one direction, and everybody at A, we, we at A. I understand a little something. We at, we at A. How you at Z? That don't make no sense. The whole church in, in A, we, we rejoicing, but you come out of nowhere with your odd self. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs>
But that song, going on with me a couple of days, and have you also And it's not singing Baptist, but it's singing in my ear. And I don't understand it. And when the time has come, Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. I want God to bless you. Amen. I want him to ask him to continue to keep you on your solid This faith of ours that I love dearly with my whole heart is an encouragement to the young people. Amen. Amen. I hope my daughter listen. <laughs> Not for the reason of anything negative. Yes. 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 I want to say for people to understand. Yes. 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 She's yes. not a disobedient child. Yes. That man makes you fear to come. Yes. By the things they say. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So I trust in as you. You know, I want to hold you soft. I want to hold you gentle. <laughs> because you make my heart yes. rejoice. Amen. You're saying it as it is. Amen. You're telling as it is. <laughs> and for that, you will be able to tell the people as it is. Amen. You will fix your home. Because if you can't fix your home, you can't lead God people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You hear me? You say I'm young and in order to do it, I must get married. Tell them that. Yes. 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 You take on nothing to do otherwise. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. You didn't want to give it to him, Vikey, Vikey. Oh, he yes. needs to pay for it. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Some young people just selling it free. Amen. Yes. Yes. They forget how important it is. Mind your business. Obey the commandment of God. And say it as it is. It's easy to sin. And all I hear is your sin sweet. I like when you say that sin sweet. I was there too. But now that I know God. I was a Baptist long time, you know, since I was 11 years old, I didn't know God. I joined Baptist. Yes. But when I become a child of God, I make some change. Come on. Because I start watching the elders doing anything. But I didn't want to be like that. Continue to build the white cloth. Yes, yes. Continue to be your husband prop. Yes, Lord. Because any man that is strong, it takes a what? And if I have nothing to do with youth, yes. if I have nothing to do with age, no, no, so true. But stand so that when he falls, you will be able to fall and run rock back yes, and stand. When I look at you, you remind me of a woman. I pray God that the husband will continue to respect you. Yes. And if he don't, check me out. Yes. <laughs> continue to walk away. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Many a times in the house of God, our male tends to think that if they give the woman to lead or to do something, they're losing something. Don't ever believe that crap. Because if you does, if you are in Bishop Ashby and have me, he can do it by himself. Yeah. He cannot do it by himself. Because listen to me, we have to stand on the scale yeah. and it balances. Yeah. Yeah. And if he try to take five steps and only give me two, the house is still going to leave. Yes. Oh, yes. And we need to balance each other. 
it means that we have to work hand in hand. We have to share. Bishop asked me to sit down on the chair. But we have to get up and do Yes. I'm passing it on. If you want to work in the house of God, it's half and half. You ain't getting all the blessing if you do it all. Yes. You're still ain't being blessed. Instead of that, you're getting a little close because you're preventing me from doing what God gave me to do. And it's not that I say, Holy Ghost, come to me. I send out something and something come back. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. Understand, brethren. I am not loving you because I'm not taking crap. Amen? Amen? I'm doing exactly what God says. And I'm teaching it. If you don't want to do it, that's up to you. Praise the Lord. I do name Arch Abyss by God. I mean that by man. My name is Teacher Martha. Praise God. And my job is to yeah. teach. Teacher Martha ordained by God. Praise the harvest thing was given to me by my, my father. The late who? Alfred Bishop. Archbishop Alfred William. That was given to me. Because that is a gift that has to be given to you, appointed to you. A bishop? It's a desire. Understand the word of God. Archbishop, you have to be appointed to it. The welder above you has to appoint you. You can't go down the ground and come out a bishop. Too much of false people in the world in the faith. Learn and study your word. You desire to be a bishop. Yes. yes. It's not a gift coming down from God. Yes. Amen. Check on yourself. Understand. This little young lady here speak from the word of God. Hallelujah. Some of us here a long time and we don't know it. Amen. 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 Study to show yourself a problem. Learn the wisdom of God. Man does take church, but when God grants you, or He chooses you to lead His people, understand what He's telling you. Else you're going to lead God people astray. And the Bible says, Glory be unto you. So check yourself. Any, every and everybody cannot teach. What God gives you, stay in your lane. Amen. Amen. And leave teachers to teach. Praise the Lord. Amen. Family in Christ are coming again. When is wounded hand?
Uh, I want to say to those that is from afar, you come in a spirit give utterance. Amen? There is elders in this faith that have been here longer than some. Amen? It would not be right to put the big ones in front and we are not here to support those that come in. Good afternoon to my spiritual father, to my spiritual mother, to 
online for that person. I believe it's I knew that God had anointed David to do great things. I believe that he he was instructed by God because I don't believe your walk we walk without God telling us what we should do. We we may not some people may get it in visions, some people may get it by just sitting right here and they will hear God speak to them. Some people are just blessed that way. But David who who believe in God also had to test a time. He had to tell him, don't, don't come with me. Basically, do not fight my battle. My battle is my battle. Don't fight with me. But Ittai was so strong and believing that God had instructed him to be with David. I showed his loyalty to David. And the word loyalty means remaining committed to these to those people God has brought into our life and call us to serve even in the time of difficulty. And at that time David was dealing with difficulty because he had to make a decision should he be the king who he is and basically take down his son. Because his flesh moved with him, he said he he decided to run. Yes. Because as a father, as a parent, you you don't want to take hands of your own child. Mm. The question that we need to ask ourselves, are we committed to do something like that? Do we have the loyalty to stand by our minister's side when something like that happens? If we look at Ruth and Naomi, mm -hmm. Ruth lost her husband and she decided to stay with her mother-in-law. I'm thinking Naomi probably was the best mother-in-law ever because not everybody has that relationship with their mother-in-law. <laughs> she stayed with her and she was faithful. She walked with her. She, she went to another country where she didn't know anything of. But with her humble, being humble that she is, she was able to, to reap the harvest, basically. Yeah. She was able to get married. And by her getting married, she was able to bear a child. And by her being a child, that child grew up and bared another child. Uh -huh. And then bared another child. Uh -huh. And then what happened? Who came in the picture? Jesus. Not Jesus. It was David. If that bloodline didn't stop, David would not have been in that picture. David would not never exist. So that's how, if, if Ruth, decided to separate from Naomi, we would not have David. And if we didn't have David, who we wouldn't have? Jesus Christ. Everything happens for a reason and a purpose. It's, it's funny how, because we don't know the words that was given, given to any of the people that has to preach. We don't know it. We know our word that we have to preach. This morning, because I'm fighting, I'm, fight, I'm fighting with the, the lesson. This morning, Romans 13 was given to me. And it's funny how the sister brought Romans 13. Romans 13 talk about the authority. It talks about the people who governs us. 
And who is the people that govern, govern us in the church? If I could have the mothers of each church just stand in front of the altar for, for one minute. And if I could have the ministers who belongs to them to the mother, who supports the mother. Come quick, come quick. I'm not a person that knows the Bible, but I walk with when God tell me to walk. Amen. So the members of each of these churches are here. Each of us, each of you guys are here. Who would do like a time and go to battle for any of them? Who would go to battle for them? You're saying yes, but think twice. Who would go to battle for them? Who would stand with them? Because the time is coming. The time is coming where they will need their brothers and sisters, their children to stand with. Who going to stand with them? We say that we're going to stand with them. When people talk about them, when people say all kind of manner of things about them, because we know people do. My mother people say stuff. We hear it from our, our right ears to our left ears. We hear it. We hear people saying stuff about them. I pray to God that you guys stand with them. Because today is woman in mission. And Mother Hazel said there's a battle for the women of the church. Maybe she didn't say the, the, the church, but she said for women there's a battle. There's a war. There's a war. So against when, women in the ministry of God. Right. Okay. The war is to silence us. Yes. Right. We must not preach, we must not teach, we must not prophesy because the man is battling against us. And as teacher Marva truly declare, there are women also is coming against us. So the woman in the mission is a privilege. We taking it, you know, you know, it's just woman in mission. But there was a time that this could not be possible. And the daughter that spoke to us there, she used a word about Jonah and throwing the weight overboard. The boldness of the Holy Spirit, the woman possessed that boldness that when the man may compromise, the woman of God, most of the time, will not compromise. Amen. 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 <laughs> That's my sister. <laughs> Basically, I'm trying just to make a point. He was so committed into serving David. We need to be committed to these women that run the church. Yes. They were the ones who got the vision to build the church. They were the ones who got the vision and the, the direction, thank you, to, to do God's work. With the men and the individuals who stand with them, you have to keep them pushing on, pressing on. We, can, we cannot let people come in and mash them down. Yes. They have to stand strong. And in order for them to stand strong, we have to be strong with them. Yes. Yes. Amen. Like I said, I don't know the Bible from back to front. <laughs> but I'm a woman that... When the spirit talked to me, I have to obey at times, not all the times. I <laughs> but I was sitting at my table and I kept on fighting and I was like, I know what I want to say, I know what I say, why I can't go on paper. But Romans 13 came to me about authority. 
they are the people that is in authority to, to oh, us. Right. We have to listen. And they need the support to press, press on and go on. Just like David needed the, the support to, for somebody to push him on to know that he will be okay. Even though his son is about to fight him for his position, right. God is not going to remove him and put his yeah. son because he anointed him for the position. Yeah. Yeah. Just remember that God anointed each and every one of these individuals for this position. Nobody can take your position. Amen. And that's the prayer. Praise Amen. Lord.
So all the ministers on the altar, diversities of gifts, children in our midst, family in Christ. A pleasant good afternoon. Now, my lesson this afternoon is coming from Hebrew chapter 12, verse 7 to 13. I am not going to read the lesson. I would like to go right into what it is I have to say. Amen? Amen. All right. Now the theme, as we were told, is I am the potter, you are the clay, says the Lord. And my topic from Hebrews 12 is how do we endure chastening? How do we endure chastening? Firstly, I would like to establish that before I could get into the lesson, there's certain things we have to understand. I have five children. <laughs> My youngest is 15 years old, and he's six foot two. So when you see this six foot two young man approach me, sometimes as parents we have to remind them, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> me, mother, you <laughs> child. <laughs> I see the theme for this year as God establishing our role in our relationship with him. He's letting you know, I am the potter, you are the clay. I am the one that can do something with you. I don't mean to make it sound so bad, but he has just done. Yes. Do it. That's all we are. With water. With water. Now, this lesson is about a word I keep hearing people mentioning all afternoon. It's about discipline. Amen. Come on. Discipline is the practice of training people to obey rules or code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. So this is about us as Christians having discipline. It's about our Father in Heaven disciplining us and it's about we having discipline when we are being disciplined. Yes. We got it? Yes. Amen. Especially that last part, when we getting disciplined. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, it's easier to endure chastisement if you understand by who the punishment is coming from and why you're being chastised. Now if I just walk up to somebody just so I start to beat them, I'm going to get resentment from them. I might get licks too. Yes. <laughs> but Hebrews 12, 6 says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Now, no wise and good father will wink at your falls. We don't watch our children doing the wrong thing and go, <laughs> yeah, that's okay, go ahead. A good and wise father. Don't do that. Yes. So you know that your chastisement is coming from God who loves you. <coughs> Likewise, the children will know their chastisement or discipline or punishment coming from their parents because of love. Or in the church from your leaders 
If you have a leader who you know don't like you, are you gonna accept chastisement? No. But when you know your leader loves you, your elder loves you, they're showing you that love. When they discipline you, it's easier for you to accept it. It's easier. Now, 1 Peter 4, 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. So chastisement is part of your spiritual life. We as Christians tend to think that when we see our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ being chastised, we think, oh Lord, they do something wrong. God turned the back on them. But chastisement is part of our spiritual life. Amen? Amen. And it is part of your relationship with God as your heavenly father. So there's nothing wrong with chastisement. So stop trying to figure out what somebody do or what they didn't do when you see them going through the tough period. It's just like Job. When Job was going through what he was going through, what did his friends say? What's it do? Something is wrong. But instead of pointing your fingers or shushuing or bad talking or calling somebody on the phone, how about we pray for them? We pray for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ so that they are able to make it through their chastisement. Now, in my studies, I realized that there are two reasons why we are chastised. The first one is the one that everybody knows. We are chastised for our sins. Which child of God, you all know, could sin and keep getting away with it? We're talking about a child of God. Which child of God could continue doing the wrong thing and keep getting away with it? Sometimes we see others getting away with doing one wrong thing after another. And we tend to wonder how... What you know, like I tell people, you, what you might do and get away with it, I can't do it. Yeah. You know, in Trinidad, we say, Go Paul up is not see Paul up. <laughs> but family in Christ, this has nothing to do with the luck, it has everything to do with the Lord. Yeah. And you may think that you personally or other members in the church, they are going through so much. You might ask yourself, hey, wait, what it is I'm doing wrong? But Hebrews 12, 7 says, for what son is he whom the father chastised not? So as long as you are a son of God, as long as you are a daughter of God, he is going to chastise you. There's no escaping. There's no escaping. Then there are those who willingly experience an apostasy from Christ. Mm -hmm. I learned a new word. Yes, yes, that's a good word. Apostasy from Christ is the fruit of preferring the gratification of the flesh to the blessing of God. The fruit of preferring, because you know we have people who just do that. They know it's wrong. Yes. They know that God's not going to like it. Mm -hmm. But they will just keep doing it because it makes them feel good. The fear of the Lord is the 
the beginning of wisdom. So, you have no fear for God? None? You just keep doing what you're doing? And these are people who know what they're doing is wrong, but how they feel and what they want is more important than what God wants from them. But I have word for people like that. Anytime you are able to go on and on in sin without rebuke is a sad sign. It's a bad sign. It's a sign of alienation from God. To be left alone to do wrong is God giving you over to sin. He don't want to have no part with you anymore. He's disowning you. You might be born again and think that you're under the paling of grace, but you might be calling him father, but you're the offspring of another father. You are the offspring. And as the Bible referred to them as bastards. Come on. Family Christ, let us not be bastards. Let us be sons and daughters of God. So, sin is one of the reasons why you're going to get chastised. The second reason is you can be chastised to prevent you from doing sin. That's right. That's, right. That's what it is. That's what it is. To prevent yes. you yes. from sinning. That's it. And I went on to read about the Apostle Paul. Paul was getting visions and, you know, messages from God. And he mentioned, he said he was being blessed and exalted by God. Yet he mentioned that least he be exalted above measure by himself or others, he was given a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet him. Yes. Now this buffet is not the all you can eat. <laughs> buffet in the Bible refers to being beaten. And if we read Matthew 26, 66 to 68, we'll understand that Jesus was also buffeted. When he was accused of blasphemy by the high priest, just before they crucified him. So Paul is in the church being beaten. So it may seem that this messenger of Satan was beating Paul. Family in Christ. You have any thorns in your flesh? Thorns in your flesh, people who insist on making your life miserable, yeah, yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. We need them, we need them. People in the church, people on your job, a thorn in your flesh. And it says that Paul prayed three times uh -huh. to have it depart from him. He couldn't take it no more. And God said no. Amen. God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. And Paul endured his chastisement by saying, most gladly therefore shall I rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Punishment from God, chastisement from God is proof that God
God loves you. He is the potter. Yes, ma'am. And he has every right to mold us and make us after his will. Yes, Lord. Romans 12, 9 says, Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? And live. So family in Christ, we are chastised to prevent the death and destruction of our souls. It is to correct and cure the sinful disorders which make us unlike God. Amen? Amen. It is to improve grace which is the image of God in us the image that other men should be able to see so that they can glorify the Father in heaven. So now that I've explained all of that, <laughs> let me stick on the topic, how to endure chastisement. Now that we know what chastisement is, we know how, why we are chastised, now we have to figure out how to enjoy it. The Bible says that chastening is grievous. So trust me, when you get in chastised, you're not having a good time in the Lord. It means it's severe and serious. At times it can be painful. Amen or sorrowful. Chastening is not a nice thing to experience. You may suffer, but at the end, at the end of your chastisement, it produces the peaceable fruit of righteousness, and we become partakers in his holiness. But guess what? It doesn't produce the same fruit in everybody. <laughs> if you realize you are being chastised, you must not despise the chastening of the Lord. Some people get vexed with God when they get punished. They stop going to church. They stop praying. They vex with everyone and somebody do them. <laughs> true, true, true. Truth? We must endure chastening. Though it may be sorrowful, yet we should always rejoice. You have to endure chastening as poor, yet making many rich. You have to endure chastening as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Likewise, you must not be impatient towards God. You must wait on the Lord and be of good courage. You must be humble and submissive in affliction, in distress, in dishonor. When people bring evil reports against you, you must still be humble and submissive. And when people bring good reports about you, but they're deceivers, you ever see them? The kiss of Judas. You must still be humble and submissive. Also, you must not make light of your afflictions. You know, we like to say, God know my heart. He made me like this. For your chastisement is the hand and rod of God and his rebuke for sin. We must endure in faith as dying 
and behold we live. Okay, let's be real. We didn't get the chastisement that Jesus received for our sins. He had to die. If we had to die for our sins, where would most of us be right now? We are chastened, but God doesn't kill us. He doesn't kill us. You must not faint when you are rebuked. I like this one. You must not despond and sink under your trial. Walking around sad like if somebody died. You're sitting in church and you're not talking to nobody. You're not singing, you're not clapping, you're not praising God because things bad. You have no good words to encourage anybody else. We must endure chastening by pureness, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by the word of truth, by the power of God, and by the armor of righteousness. Some of us, when we are being chased, and we complain to everybody except God. We call on everybody on the phone. We want to know from everybody what to do. But we will not go to God and talk to Him. First Peter four thirteen says to rejoice and be glad also with exceeding joy. Even if you be reproached for the name of Jesus, happy are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon joy. Family in Christ, the race is not for the swiftest, but for those who endure to the end. So run a good race and encourage the person next to you to keep on their journey towards heaven. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says to the church, Blessed be God, the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. 1 Peter 5.10 says, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect. Yes. Establish, yes. strengthen, yes. and settle you. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.